All right, to continue our animation project. Animation is complex. So we want to start with a planning sketch to help us understand what our ambitions are. And really, it's helpful to think of it when you're doing this rough sketch that you're just planning out what's called an animatic. An animatic is when you take a rough storyboard and you animate it, and it just becomes this kind of choppy story guide. So we're not going to get to perfectly smooth, you know, 24 frames per second professional animation unless we want to spend a lot of time outside of class on it. So my ambition is always to do the project within the class parameters, within the class time, and to show you what I'm doing. So while the last video was processing, I sketched out my rough storyboard sketch, and I talked to you guys through it, but I'll walk you through it here so it's in the video. And honestly, I like drawing it by hand because I don't mind drawing with a tablet in the computer screen, but I really hate writing with a tablet in the computer screen. And it is important to write some notes on your rough storyboard sketch. So it is nine by, it is nine frames, three squares on three squares. Let me sharpen it up a little bit. Let me get some of that fluorescent color out of it. All right. So, this gives me a pretty clear idea of what I'm doing. And I want to save that into a new folder, and this new folder is going to be assignment three in my class folder. What else should I have in assignment three? Well, if I know I'm going to use this as the element I've used before, I'm going to make a duplicate of that, exercise number two, the PSD, the one with all the different components in photo P, this one, it's got everything I could ever need to manipulate this image, right? I am going to save that. So export it as, or save it as a PSD to the desktop. So I have a copy of it to put into my assignment three folder. So I don't accidentally overwrite exercise two. And I can decide whether I want to have the shadows on it or not, right? So now that I have assignment three, I'm going to mark it with yellow because I'm working on it. I'm going to start moving these assets into it. So I know I'm going to use that. I know I need to use this sketch I made that I downloaded. And that's actually going to be the first thing I put into Canvas. So. What that sketch shows me, it shows me the plan for this complex animation. So I start and I give it my name. And then I'm going to immediately put in my rough storyboard sketch. Now the reason to do three on three as a grid is because that will match our formatting really well. And it also forces us to think in terms of beginning, middle, and end. So if we're showcasing a transformation, we need to think, how is that transformation communicating to our audience in a time-based way? So in the beginning three frames, you're introducing the, the elements that are going to be concerned, right? So I'm introducing first my emoji, and then a book floats down on top of my emoji's head, and then it's going to start to glow. That's my first transformation. And the emoji looks happy. And then that glow will start to fade. And then in the middle, you start showcasing like the most climactic of the transformations. Then the book's going to catch fire. That's going to concern the emoji. 
then the smoke is going to gather the flames are raging flames are raging more smoke eventually that's going to like cover the emoji with soot and that's all going to slowly start to clear and then when the emoji uh, emerges from the smoke and soot it's going to be clean but it's going to be without the book and then that sets it to reset to the beginning where a new book appears and it all starts over again so beginning middle end think of the beginning as setting up your character your setting the elements the middle is where you start to showcase the the most dramatic transformation the end is where you show the consequences of that transformation so you're showcasing a transformation with clear beginning middle and end it's like the three layers of depth of storytelling okay and that's how you can acknowledge this deadline even though we have a few classes we're working on it so the next thing we're going to do is start working on our animation and we do that by figuring out our assets and sometimes I might go outside like to Pixabay which I love and so far we've only looked at photos on Pixabay but what I can also do is look for vector graphics right to go with my emoji so I can look for fire vector or I can just limit images of fire to just vectors right not all vectors are going to be clean shapes easy to cut out but some are right and I already have the ones I made and I can always make more but sometimes it's helpful to find these components So if I look for vector flame, here we go. I like this one. I like this one. I like when they have the, the clear background. That makes it easy. I like this one. I can layer these all up. I can use them all in different ways. And remember, these are all Creative Commons open. This is a nice little spark to start things off. So this, and sometimes the assets you find might make you amend your idea a little bit. Maybe instead of just the book spontaneously catching on fire, it's just an idea, but maybe a, uh, at this point, when the glow is fading from the learning, a little match starts to drop on it. A little lit match. I kind of like that. I'm going to add that in. So I'm going to make a little note here. I'm going to edit it. Instead of having to redraw it, I'm just going to remind myself for Wednesday, starting on frame 4, this is in the middle section. A lit match will drop onto the book. All right. So what do I do? Now I, I download these. I can download them as vectors or even better yet, just as PNGs, because I don't need them to be that large. We're just going to do 800 by 800 pixels. And then I put them all in my folder. You can also do a Google image search for assets you might need. You don't want them to be too small, but they need to be able to, to fill an 800 by 800 pixel image All right. and there's six pages of vector flame so no shortage I already made my my vector book I think I'll just keep that as is but then I can look for emojis 
There may be expressions. Of course, I can always make my own as well, but I can limit that to vectors because I'm, I'm playing with vector graphics. It's not like I'm going to make a vector animation. That's what you do with Flash. Instead, yeah, I kind of like these. These are fun. Instead, I'm going to uh, use the vectors and just as clean, flat graphics. Right? Instead of having to make every shape myself. And it's good to have a lot of assets to play with. And then I can always modify them. So we see the flat 2.0 examples. <laughs> All right. So that is it. Once you've downloaded them, you put them into your folder. And you are ready to start fulfilling your vision next class.